Control, this is flight. We're tracking three fast moving objects, uh, origin unknown. Third Days of Moon and master music artist Paul Barrett is back with his second album. 11 brand new soundtracks out of this world, heard over 100 million times. Available on iTunes right now. Paul Barrett's Third Days of Moon, Alien Nation. Wow, I'm pumped. Third phase of Moon, Blake Cousins. Taking your calls from around the world, you just listened to it. Paul Barrett's out with his new album. It's his second album right here at Third Phase. You've heard it. Millions have heard it. Alien Nation, Third Phase of Moon, Paul Barrett, available on iTunes today. The link's below. We're going to be sharing that. The world should groove to Paul Barrett's incredible sounds. And, man, I just, I dig it. I dig it. I dig it a lot. It's pretty... It's pretty outrageous what's going on. And uh, Paul Barrett's music has inspired the third phase of Moon community around the world for the past four to five years. Quite incredible. The number to call in tonight on uh, this Friday night's radio show. I'm so excited. Love Friday nights. Love it. 347-934-0378 is the number to call in. we got a lot of callers building up. We're going to try to get to everybody. We're looking for good stories. In regards to the UFO phenomenon, have you seen a UFO? Have you been taken aboard a ship? Have you been in contact with aliens? These are questions that people want to know, and I frankly think that Third Phase Moon is a place where we get this information. The public the public knows what's going on. The major media is not telling us what's going on, obviously. They laugh at us. And a lot of people laugh If you even think you've seen a UFO, people are afraid to share their stories. And that's what Third Phase Moon is all about. The community bringing people together without shame and telling people what they've experienced. So let's get to that right now. Third Phase of Moon's live right now. And we're going to area code 708. Welcome to the show. Hello, Hello. Eric Coates. Yeah, you there? Hello. Yeah, I'm here. Um, hey, nice, nice to be on your show, man. Hey, um, no problem. You're, go ahead. Okay. Uh, well, this story actually happened this morning, and um, what are okay, you, what, what are second. the odds of me wait, calling? Wait. That's awesome. Hold on. I, what was your name, sir? Alberto. 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 Okay, like, Alberto. Yeah. Yes. All right. Uh, so as of as okay. of February nineteenth, two thousand sixteen, early this morning, you witnessed the UFO today. Yes, when I was heading towards school, like my mom was dropping me off, I Where witnessed was... like a white, like really bright white light. It was like an orb, and once I saw it, I told my mom. Like, look, like, you know, like, in a really shocked way, I told her, look, once once I told her to look, she she looked, and boom, it, it just gone in two, in two seconds, or one second. It just disappeared. Well, did your mother get a chance to see what you're pointing at, or no, witnessing? No, she didn't. She didn't, and she told me, oh, maybe it's, maybe it's a UFO. You, you um, never know until, until I saw it again once. I got out of the gym today. Um, I was looking, I was looking around the sky. I was looking for it. I was like, okay, I really want to see this again because I barely even got to see it the first time. So then I see it. It's like really, really far away. It's like a really white circle, like a really bright one. And um, then I take a picture of it. You could barely even see it. But then my dad picks me up, and then. Since I live near a park, it's really open. So then I run towards the park, and I take another video. I take I take a video of it, and I literally got proof of it, that it was glowing, and it, it just disappeared. I got it on video. Well, wow. Some video evidence is always good. Have you uh, uploaded it anywhere, the YouTube have you sent it to my no, Facebook? No, I will be. I will be uploading it tomorrow on my YouTube. Okay. Wait. What's the name of your YouTube channel? 
Alberta? Uh, you might want to write it down because it's kind of weird to. Um, no, I, it's okay. I'll have this recorded and we'll have all our researchers look it up. So we'll we'll get the video. All but right, go ahead. My, Say my, your name. Uh, my use is I'm and then Z W Q O, like all like uh, I'm and then space Z W Q O. All right. Well, there it is, everybody. That's uh, Alberta. And uh, one one quick uh, question, Alberta. Where exactly? What state? What a what a city? Where? Uh, Did this the U.S. Today? Chicago, Illinois. Well, you know, there's a lot of people in Chicago, Illinois. So I'm hoping maybe other people. I'm going to look that up here after the show. I, I maybe there's a rash of sightings that we might be getting some collaborative video from Alberta's eyewitness testimony that he just shared to the world. Quite incredible. You know what? All There's all kinds of stories and people that are calling in right now. So I'll tell you what, what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to get to all kinds of callers and who knows what kind of wild ride we're going to be going on. Blake Cousins, this is Third Phase of Moon. Blake Cousins here, third phase of Moon, and uh, you know we've been uh, doing big callouts to F1. F1 has been off the radar. There's been concerns from the people. People are wondering what happened to Chalice and F1. And I'm, I'm hoping we could get Chalice and F1 on tonight and get some updates. But before we do that, before we do that, let's get some more callers. Let's get these callers in. They they got stories to say. And we want to hear it. Four zero three, you're live. Third phase move. Welcome to the show. Would that be me? Or, yeah, that's you. What's your name? All right, cool, uh, Arthur. Hey, Arthur. Welcome to third phase. Wow, I'm surprised I even got through. I've been trying for a while, but never managed to get through. Been listening to you for quite some time now. I live in uh, Alberta, Canada. I've got a wow. few experiences. I'm not okay. sure which one you want to hear first. Uh, Let's hear the most incredible experience in regards to what? Aliens, UFOs? Uh, I would you know, definitely UFOs. Uh, my first experience was, I would say, maybe nine years ago. I was watching. I went outside for a, for a smoke. Uh, I live I was out at my mom's place out in the country. It's out, like pitch black at night, clear night. Early uh, early spring, I was tracking some satellites, which was really cool. And I saw a satellite coming from the east and one coming from the west. And I could see that they were on a... I, I was sure that they weren't going to collide, but they were on the same course. And I thought, this is really cool. I've never seen this before. They're going to pass, like, really close. Um, but as they got closer and closer... The one from the west disappeared, like it just blinked out. The one from the east, it kept coming, and it stopped right where, pretty much like over my head where they would have met. It stopped like instantly. Like I thought it was a satellite. That's what it looked like. It looked like two satellites, but it stopped dead. Like didn't slow down. It just stopped. Now, wow. I know satellites That's can't do that. No, no, satellites can't do that. You kind of brought a, a interesting sighting I had uh, back in 2010, around January 4th, if I recall, and we were watching these lights, and they looked like satellites, and they were exactly how you're saying, uh, almost going, playing chicken with each other, 
heading straight into each other, but they didn't stop. But they did bank. They they actually arced in the sky, and satellites don't arc in the sky either. They're just on their trajectory path. So it's quite amazing what I experienced. It sounds like uh, what you experienced is even a little bit more insane. Like that dead. Yeah, stop, this, yeah, dead because stop. that wasn't it. It didn't just stop. It it turned red. It stopped. It flashed red, and then it disappeared. And then the other satellite coming out of the west appeared where it should have been, as if it was it was traveling the whole time. But it disappeared, and then reappeared where it should have been. That was that was the first experience that I've had. And like well, I said, that good. was uh, yeah. I thought so. T- that's what put me on to. Okay, well maybe we're not alone because I know yeah. they, even if it was. There's no way a manned uh, ship could do that. It, they would be crushed. And even even if it wasn't manned, I don't know any technology that could withstand those forces. Like it didn't slow down. Like it just stopped. But well, that was, no anyway, technology. that was the uh, that was the first. Yeah, that was the first one. Yeah, I have got Let's get to the I've got a couple okay. others. Uh, yeah, they're Let's very they're. More. Let's get to one right. more. Okay, uh, one more, one more, and then we got to get other callers in. If you got to understand that. But we appreciate it. Yeah, oh, okay. Let's hear it. All right. Well, I, I could probably combine these two together. All right. You, you've heard of the fake planes? Yeah. The plane you've that... You've heard of... You, yes. The plane yeah, that they, looks like retarded. Looks, retarded looking plane. It, yeah. They morph. Yep. Yeah. It's like, it looks like a jet plane, but there's no sound. There's no trail. And it's kind of blurry. I, I filmed... I actually got that one on film. It's not the best film because it's just a cell phone. But right here in my own town, uh, Black Diamond, Alberta, I filmed something. It was a jet. Like, it was definitely a commercial jet. We don't see those kinds of things in these areas. We, like, we see gliders and Cessnas. This thing was way too low, traveling way too slow. And I got it on film, and then it just disappeared. It was, like, it was there, and then it wasn't there. It was just disappeared and I saw not something similar to that but I didn't get it on film I couldn't tell if I thought it was initially a plane but it wasn't moving and the same thing it just disappeared like it just like like the sky just swallowed it it just it was there and just blended into the surroundings like it was gone you know what I'm thinking is and I want to ask the people what I know there's a lot of people that have seen these planes that just don't look quite right and the mimic comes to mind holographic uh interdimensional inner being of a sort it seems like they're that these planes that people are seeing that don't act like planes is quite an interesting phenomenon i want to invite people to comment on what they think that is and i want to thank the caller all the way from canada for uh, sharing and uh, keep your eyes open, get good video of this stuff, and then you know where to submit it to, I'm sure. All right. I've been a big fan for a long time, and I appreciate you guys what you're doing in this platform of uh, communication. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for calling in. That's a, so far three stories in less than 15 minutes. We're going to get to more right now. That's what we got to do. we got to get the public speaking Speaking out loud to the world, four zero seven. You're you're live right now. You there? Hello. Hello. Welcome to the show. Hi. Are you talking to me? <laughs> yeah, I'm talking to you. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, it's hard to tell. I thought I thought the last call you were talking to me, but um, actually, I was calling to ask you a question. I was never into, uh, you know, UFOs or anything like that. I always believed in them, but I never. Like, I wasn't into watching the sky or anything like that until my brother said he saw something. Uh, we're here in Florida, central Florida. And mm-hmm. uh, so I started I started watching YouTube videos all the time, which is how I, I stumbled across you guys and uh, been watching all your stuff and um, signed up with you guys. Well, one night I'm sitting on the back porch with my wife, and we're on our laptops and tablets. I'm on YouTube. We're, we're working, but I'm, I always play on YouTube while I'm working. And um, all of a sudden this, this – and this, like, totally is what set me off and got me into it, was this blue ball of fire. It made no noise. It was about the size of a basketball. 
came right over our house, right over our backyard diagonally, and it was like just above, high enough to clear my roof. She thought it came straight down from the sky. I, I, I think it was going across, like away towards the back of the house, away from our house. And it was just like dead silent. It was about the size of basketball. It was just a light blue, almost like an indigo watch color blue. And it was just a ball of fire. And I was like, well, I, I just, my jaw dropped and I was dead silent. And we both looked up at the same time. And then she said, whoa. And right when she said that, it was like it responded, it like responded to her and it just disappeared. And it turned like the lights just went off and it was in a black, like a black cannonball. And it took off so fast, like you, if you blinked, you would have missed it. And I was like, what the hell was that? And so that set me off, like that point right there. I don't know what that was. I and I, I don't know if I'll ever find out, but that, like, was a trigger. And I've been, like, star- I can't stop staring at the sky ever since. It. This has been, like, six, seven yeah. months. Wow. And now I, I, every I night. Don't blame you. I don't blame you. Like, every night after, now yeah. I see stuff uh, in the sky, mm-hmm. like, almost every night now. So uh, two nights ago I had this white thing about the size of a football the uh, night before last. And it's always between 3 and 6 a.m. that I see stuff. But it was, like, a white thing about the size of football, a white light. I couldn't tell you the shape or anything. It was just a white light. Same, almost the exact same path right over the house. As soon as it got over the top of my house, the light went out and I shined the light to see, but it was gone. And, I, you know, I don't know what the hell either one of those were, but like I'm let like me, a distant now question. that's staring at the sky. Yeah. What was, let me uh, get your name. What was your name again? It's Joe. Hey, Joe. Let me uh, ask you that. Are you... Because it almost sounds like an arc flash, and I was going to ask you if it kind of like you had a power flex in your home, and you kind of confirmed it that on this one there was. Is there any kind of like high-powered lines or transformers next to you by any chance? No, not at all. And what what we saw, <laughs> I mean, I don't know how else to explain it to you. The, the blue, I would just call it a sphere, a fireball, whatever you want to call it. The, the blue ball of fire that we saw, like I said, it was a little bigger than a – it was like a basketball, maybe, maybe a little bigger, maybe a beach ball size. It was going nice and slow until she said, whoa. It was like it was like she scared it. That's how fast it turned black and took off like a cannonball. That, it was not – that was the first thing I thought. Could that have been electricity? You know, what the – there's no way. If I were to hold a basketball in front of you, that's how detailed you could see of how perfectly round it was. You could see the flames moving throughout it. You couldn't see through it, but but it but it did look transparent, if that makes any sense. Almost like you could see into it, but you couldn't see through it. And the flames were just, like, moving all around like it was burning, but it was a perfect circle. It wasn't, like, choppy on the edges from the flames. It was, like, a perfect circle, almost if it were a glass ball with fire inside of it. It was just weird. Yeah, to say the least. It almost sounds like it's organic in its own sense, almost like an embryonic a cell of some some cell form or and right. it didn't make any noise. We have oh. underground electric lines here. There's no there's no cell towers. There's no transformers around. Uh, my neighborhood transformer is all the way at the far end of my street, like twenty, maybe fifteen, twenty houses down. I know it wasn't anything electrical, just because of you. I mean, you'd have to see it to know. But the way it was floating or hovering, or if you want to call it. It was going maybe five, ten miles an hour until she did that, and it was like it was like she scared it when she said "whoa," and it just went pitch black and shot off like a cannonball. I mean, I, I, you saw it take off. She didn't, but I did because I, I I didn't blink. Like I was just I was I was just like uh, frozen and dumbfounded because I, I I was just like, what am I seeing? I wasn't like scared. I was I, I guess amazed. It was like the, this. I mean, I didn't even know how to. Uh, I never felt that way. I just didn't know what the hell I was looking at, but I couldn't look away. So, <laughs> and I've seen yeah. like all kinds of crazy stuff since we saw. We were sitting on the porch. Like I just, if I don't stay up, I'll get up early. You know, just watch the sky now. And it's like I, I saw, I saw something shoot through the sky really fast one night, and uh, and I had to go get her and bring her out. And it like was going so fast, it left a line in the cloud. Like it cut through the cloud and cut a line through the cloud. And I've seen stuff like that. Like maybe twice a week now or every other night almost I see stuff and it's like you know it's usually something really fast or it's a crazy kind of light or something moving uh in a in a flying in a pattern or doing something that you know it's not a drone or any kind of uh man-made uh 
thing because you can't hear it and there's we don't make anything that flies that fast or that can be going 100 miles an hour and make a 90 degree sharp turn this you know we, yeah. you can't do that it would break anything we make you, you that's exactly right joe and joe's like every other eyewitness they know what practical aviation is capable of they 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 obviously know that there's top secret aircraft out there but what these people are witnessing and what you've just been hearing is things that are way i mean way out of our league as far as any capability of this kind of technology joe uh, thanks for calling in basically i want you to keep in touch uh have your cameras ready and uh you know where to share this when uh, you capture something yeah, incredible, it's gotta be right? something on another dimension and that's why we can't figure it out you know because it's we're we're only seeing light but and and weird things moving weird you know but it's got it's got to be something more than that, maybe on a whole other dimension that we just can't comprehend yet. And uh, maybe one day we'll figure it out. But right now, we're probably like zoo animals to them, and they're just watching us. <laughs> Who knows? That's right. That's I right. Appreciate- Joe, thank you, Joe. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, calling in. And we're going to get to more callers right after this. Flight, this is control. Do you still have a visual on the three objects? Blake Cousins here. Blake Cousins here at Third Phase Moon. We're back and we're taking calls from around the world. We're going to be getting to. Oh, we got callers calling in on at our studio right now. But I want to get to F1 here very shortly, along with I'm hoping Chalice. I'm hoping Chalice is here, and we're going to hopefully find out what's been going down. But I know we have some uh, callers that we need to get to. Because they've been waiting for a while, and I, I need to bring in everybody. So let's go to area code nine zero four. Are you there? You're live third phase of moon. Hello. Yeah. Hello. You there? You're nasty. What? What's hello? this? Hello. Yeah, hi there. This is McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> no, this isn't McDonald's. This is third phase of moon, but. That's quite funny. Kids. Kids will be kids, right? Let's get to area code 267. You're live, third phase of moon. Hello, 267. You there? 267? Wow, that's kind of weird. Let's get to another caller. Let's go to area code 702. You there? Weird. It's weird. Hello? Hello. Oh, hello. Yeah, you there? Yeah. How you Is doing? Chalice? Yeah. Chalice? Wow, yeah. we got Chalice. Chalice, how you doing? I'm doing great. I loved your video with all the stuff in Hawaii. That was amazing. Yeah. Is that about uh which which video? Chalice enlighten me. There's a lot of videos we film in Hawaii. Oh, the the last one. With the uh... Oh. It's a great video, the last one, the one that you just did and you, and you sent me about uh, your petroglyph. Yes, yeah, yes. Petroglyph. Absolutely. Hey, thanks for watching. That was, uh, uh, you know, that's amazing what the Hawaiians have done over thousands of years here. And we have a, a kahuna, and he's a spiritual leader, and he's really close with the Hawaiian spirits. And he, he says that the Hawaiians we're in contact with the star people and he he's in contact with them as well but that's that's another story chalice 
I, I, I wanted to uh, get this mystery solved while we're here live because I know you and F1, people wanted to know, how do you guys meet in the beginning? And uh, I wanted to bring F1 on. Is that okay, Chalice? Yeah, that'll be fine. All right, okay. Well, let's uh, let's bring in F1. F1, are you there? So what's up, guys? Hey, F1, how you doing, man? Long time. It's been kind of funky since the hotel incident. Okay. All right, everybody, we're on third face of moon, so let's get let's get psyched here because because people want to know and what's been going on with uh, both you and Chalice. So let's get start off with Chalice. Is your health okay? Every everything okay? H- have you had any problems recently? Oh yeah, but <laughs> yeah, but it happened. You know, um, things have been really kind of amazing, but then shocking and then surprising me. And- it's been a roller coaster. She's kidding. <laughs> it's been crazy. Well, what, what's going on, Chalice? I'm having a hard time hearing you. I'm right here. Yep. Yeah, okay. I'm right next to the phone. What do you mean? What kind of roller coaster ride have you been going on? Oh, that was my husband, Bill. He was telling you, you know, it's like starting on New Year's. Uh, some crazy things happen, and. Uh, there was a lot of other stuff involved too, and we were like trying to just make sense of it because, you know, you got to be careful what you ask for because <laughs> you might get it. But I was ready for it, and I thought I was, and I don't know, man. Huh. So, hmm. I didn't say too much. Come on. <laughs> yeah. What? Okay. Who's your husband, Chalice? Bill. Hey, Bill, 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 you there? Can I talk to Bill for a sec? Yeah, he's right here. I'm here. Hey, Bill, you there? It's Blake. I don't Hey, Bill, so, man, I I think your wife's incredibly amazing and brave and really uh, wants to get the word out as far as disclosure, maybe change this world. What do you think, you guys, what do you think, what's been going on over there? What's been this roller coaster ride. Uh, you know, like she said on on uh, on New Year's Eve, we uh, we were we were feeling kind of a little spunky, I guess, and we uh, gave out a little invitation to uh, for a visit. And uh, <laughs> but well, me, I mean, I'm I believe in this stuff, but sometimes I I still act a little bit skeptical, you know, and. Uh, <laughs> Well, some some weird some stuff weird. started happening. So I, I I went out into the living room, Blake. I opened my front door, and I look up, and there's a there, there's actually a craft up there. And I looked right at it. I pointed it to Chalice, and I said, "Hey, Chalice, look, see that?" And it was just sitting there, no movement, no sound, just sitting there. Very yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we just closed the door, Blake. And uh, it was really weird because we don't remember a whole lot after that point right there until the next point we can remember. We were standing in our kitchen in front of two empty wine glasses and an open bottle of wine, and midnight had done pass by. It was the next day. <laughs> <And> yeah. <laughs> but we uh, really have no recollection of any of the time in between that. Because... Uh, it, it became a little scary, you know. I, I think it was intervened. The, the pleadings were going to do their landing, and everything was going to be great, but they're worried because it's against the law for a landing for any human on the United States border. It's except a landing. It's a traitor. You see, it's a traitor to make you do it. So wow. they're standing, you know, they're waiting, they're wanting this. And then suddenly I'm pretty sure that Air 51 is maybe the grave. I'm not sure what happened, but it was pretty weird. There was a lot of involvement in and proof of a lot of stuff, and I documented it and captured things with duct tape and yeah, some heavy stuff. Verified down to uh, things you don't want to know. Huh? You guys are coming in a little area. It's a little hard to hear you guys. Bill came in fine, but you know what? We're gonna 
clear things up with that. Let's bring in F1 real fast. F1, are you there? Yeah, what's up? Hey, F1. Hey, man. Welcome back. So I know there's a major thing that happened to you in, uh, where was this, Pine Needles? Uh, Indio, actually, you know, uh, Rancho Mirage, Palm Desert area. Yep, this major experience happened to you. You kind of went off, and um, we tried to communicate with you recently on the show, and we had this weird, weird sound. I, I just could not explain what that was, and it seemed like there's. I've listened to everything. it over and over again, and it's uh, nothing natural. It's even if it was uh, some sort of uh, trace or block, or it wasn't uh, wasn't didn't seem. Um, Electronics can be deceiving, but um, after multiple reviews, um, it, and you know, yeah, it, it, one of the things that stands out that you heard it, Brent heard it, uh, Betsy heard it, uh, I heard it, and we're all, you know, um, upper level experienced in this area, and each one of us, if you listen, you all said the same thing as well as I was saying it at the same time. Um, it was weird and scary. And yeah. that's that, that's not something we wouldn't have said unless it got us uh, in a weird uh, reaction. And I, have, and I have no electronic equipment on or around while I'm talking to you uh, that night. And I keep listening to it, and it's really funky. If you listen to the sounds that happened, um, I'm sure you've listened to it multiple times. But oh yeah, that's for sure. um, that's that's like a mimic of, and I you know I went back and I reviewed um, the radio interruption in Great Britain, Great Britain on the news when it was a galactic leader that broke in, and uh, it's the I heard similar type of reverb from that. Uh, that playing of the show and the we're listening to the audio of it. That's because it, there was a couple sounds that sounded familiar and I was trying to place it. So I went back and sure enough, I was able to find it on that broadcast interruption of uh, the British uh, news station. If you remember it cr uh, correctly. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that, that British broadcast interrupted by a uh, galactic federation making some kind of, well, they, they uh, hacked into the airwaves, and it was really weird. Nobody could tell where the signal was coming from. And when they hacked into it, it sounded very similar to what we experienced, and that sound was uh, absolutely strange. I'm going to try and pull that up if I can. But in the meanwhile, I know I know uh, you and Chalice have met before, and it, that's quite amazing. That First of all, you guys were strangers meeting each other in third phase of moon, and then all of a sudden – it turns out it's a small world after all. You guys have met before. Some people it was speculated like that. Light, like, it was like, yeah, like a hidden, like something that had been buried in our subconscious, and all of a sudden it just kind of came to me and that I re remembered because um, we used to go to Vegas all the time every other weekend, and we had the highest level of comp at a certain hotel. And um, it's really weird how we met and then went up. I had always had the top suite at the very top of this hotel. And um, I brought it up to them and they're like, oh my God, <laughs> because we stayed up, um, you know, pretty much most of the night looking out and seeing things and talking about subjects that were, uh, you could only talk about with certain people. And it's, uh, it's amazing that she, you know um, that she remembered that, and it was like we weren't really that blown away, but we were just kind of smiling on the inside. And uh, things have been really funky though since uh, uh, since the wake up the next morning in the hotel room, and with these, well, all that I can tell you is that it looked like um, I had fallen asleep under a sun lamp in the early 70s. I mean, you know, uh, went to sleep fine. Remember flying around a lot. I uh, remember looking out at the pool the second night, and I was like, oh, how come you guys aren't uh, trying to communicate with me? And it's like almost got like this kind of uh, 
information like, oh, well, we're making sure that your wife doesn't come and visit you. And uh, the next night that I was there, and usually my wife will come and see me uh, during my stays if she has to work, which is almost every day. And it was like I remember very clearly but very fuzzy flying around uh, just a, a feeling of transportation, nothing that you could put your finger on as far as um, a normal dream or anything like that. But when I woke up the next morning, it was, I usually wake up very early in the morning and uh, it was like 1130 and I went into the bathroom and I went, what the frick? And it was so startling when I looked in the mirror and I had not just, not just bright chartreuse red, but almost purplish, um, all I can did tell you, you is, the, did you go to the doctor? Was purple. That's no, like, I didn't. I didn't even take a picture of it because I was no, no. Um, even at my level, I was shocked, scared, and I was very concerned. And when I came home, um, I left the that afternoon, and when I came home, my wife went, "What the frick happened to you?" And uh, you know, I already, I already kind of knew. I'm not going to go to the doctor and say, you, "What is this?" No, you're not going to get any answers. But you're basically, you're oh, probably, no, no. Uh, you were taken aboard. You're taken aboard. You were, uh, you know, invited. We're not saying abducted anymore. You're invited aboard and subject to some kind of ex- uh, experience. I'd imagine. Well, that's my yeah. I just one comment. one thing, just real quick. Honey, was my face so red and weird that you said, what the hell's going on? See, she doesn't talk much. What? Uh, I just what? asked my wife if she saw that. Yeah, I can't hear your wife. If she's nodding up and down, say yeah. No, no, she just, <laughs> yeah, just say what you saw. Yes, honey? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was what is funny? Was it weird? Very weird. Yeah. She doesn't well, speak that great of English. Hold on a sec. Hold on a sec, F one. It's kinda of cool because Chalice and uh, F one both have brought their uh, spouses on to talk on third phase and that's pretty neat. Collaborating that hey wow, they're backing you up and they're that's pretty cool because it, 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 she doesn't <laughs> like to believe me. She's not a big. She doctor. doesn't like to believe it, but she knows it's crazy, which is cool that she at well, least. She's from a town where they they've known this for fifty years, and every, it's no big deal. Where she's very, she's from a town very close to the zone of silence in Mexico. Well, it sounds like your wife's quite shy coming on the show, but she is so reserved; it's ridiculous. Fourteen years together, and she won't kiss me in public. <laughs> Even if we right. try to get right. drunk, <laughs> I, I have the best. That's good. That's good. Real good. And that's uh, so real. Nothing wrong with reservedness. You know what? F one standby. I want to get a couple callers in. They've been uh, hanging on for a while, and we love inviting the public in. We don't know who's going to be on next. You never know what you're going to hear. And that's what Third Phase of Moon is all about. 770, you're live, Third Phase Moon. Thanks for calling in. Hey, how you doing? Hey, doing pretty good. Welcome to the show. Okay, this is cool. This is my first time calling in. Wow. Hey, man. What's your name? I'm Michael Farrell from Atlanta, Georgia. Right on, Michael. So what, have you seen a UFO? Have you been uh, in close proximity to an alien? You want to share a story? Okay. Let's hear it. I see stuff all the time, like literally. I'm I'm about, um, I would say, 10 minutes from the Atlanta airport, and I know the difference between a plane and a drone because I see them all the time. Yeah, but of course. Lately, we all do. Yep. Mm-hmm. But lately, like when I pulled in my driveway the other day, for instance, I saw a, um, a video you guys did about the flying men, about these flying glowing figures that, that that are in the sky sometimes, I saw those the other day. They were in a formation of three. And when I looked up in the sky, I'm like, oh, my goodness, they were literally just 
floating in the sky. It looked like they had their arms out, and you could see like a figure of a man or a humanoid figure. This was just yesterday. Well, you know, there's been people out there that say these could be mylar balloons. Because I, I like these, I like UFO sightings that have this extreme activity or nature to it. Where okay, either well, I'll give you a couple more. Yeah, let's hear another one. A few more. Uh, one day I was uh, driving uh, up to the corner store. This was, I mean, all of this stuff happens often. You know, I, I was driving up to the corner store, and I noticed the cars coming towards me were slowing down, and I didn't understand why they were slowing down. And when I looked up, you could see like a um, a ship. It was a ship, and it kind of uh, appeared in the sky, almost like the Predator. You know how the Predator has that cloaking device to him in the movie? Oh, yeah. And yeah. So, the, so, the, so the ship like appeared, and, and you could see it was very metallic. It, it hung in the air for about, I would say, 10 to 15 seconds. And then I guess his cloaking device came back on, and you could see, like, the silhouette of it. And then it just, like, burst into, like, a light, and it was gone. Well, you know, this cloaking exists. It does really exist. The military's experimenting with cloak devices, and obviously you need to be stealth in battle. And it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. But are they mm -hmm. using it? Is this a is this reverse alien engineer technology, or could it be used for other reasons? I'm not exactly sure, but it sounds quite interesting, and it sounds extraterrestrial, if you ask me. What you just mm -hmm. explained to us. Mm -hmm. So is, uh, another is, instance. How many times have you job, had? But in, oh, I mean a lot, <laughs> <laughs> a lot. <laughs> I get them at least in an average. Two month period, I'll see something at least once within a two month period. Uh, one particular night, night, it was the night of the election. I, I, uh, I think it was the election or the caucus or Primaries. something. But I remember you guys talking about a um, a mile long spaceship that was in the sky. And this particular night, I looked up at the moon and you could see a ring that looked like a vapor trail around the back side of the moon. But the, it made the moon look small. And the area behind it, you couldn't see stars or anything. So that lets you know it was something sitting right there. Something big. Something big. And it was big. Mm -hmm. Well, that, you know, that's uh, I've experienced something like that myself, too. I've had my uh, eyewitness accounts close up. And I, when they're blocking out the stars, and it's a clear night. You better watch out that, or better think to yourself, you're in a special moment mm -hmm. of time. And this is about as good as good gets, right? You're pretty stoked when you mm -hmm. see this. this oh, yeah. A, I just, this and is, it just wasn't me. It was a friend of mine, too. And we both just stood there looking at it because we he just he <laughs> couldn't believe it. <laughs> so yeah. did you guys uh, go home and tell people about it? What did they think about it? Well, I told people about it. Actually, I posted something on Facebook about it, and a couple of people say they saw it. But you know, you know, people just they just refuse to believe that we're just we're just not alone, and we we're we're not alone. It's 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 evident. Uh, another particular time, I was sitting on my porch, and three jets. I don't know. I won't call them jets. I'll call them what they were. UFOs. They shot right past the house. They didn't make a sound or anything, and they were close enough, they were like on the tree line, so they were a couple of hundred feet above the tree line, but the speed that they were traveling, they had to be at almost at mock, I don't know, one or two or something, but they made no sound. No sonic boom whatsoever. So basically, I'm thinking about titling this uh, show, uh, what would I say? Stealth. Um, hmm, this is a tricky one, but I would have to say a stealth camouflaged craft makes an appearance over Atlanta, Georgia. It, would that make sense to you? That'll make a lot of sense. All right, man. Well, I think that's what we're going to title this, and along with others, 
keep your eyes on the skies, man, and appreciate you sharing your stories. We got to get to other callers, but wow, that was that's pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. That's Atlanta, Georgia, uh, from Atlanta, Georgia. Callers stating some amazing things, and we've received videos over the past from Atlanta. Could be a hot spot. It could be. Have your cameras ready, people. We got a few minutes left. We're going to get to F1 and Chalice real quick, but I got one more caller that I'm going to take from the public, and that's area code two zero three. Welcome to the show. You there? Oh yeah. <laughs> You're so much listening to uh, what the other guy you were saying. Uh, yeah, I've been seeing it a couple of times, and, uh, but I didn't have the chance to tape it or something. I mean, you don't expect it when you go outside and look at the sky, and yep. you're not ready to to do it. But I've been seeing it a couple of times uh, uh, flying What's around. Your name, sir? Fernando oh, yeah. Garcia. And, Where are you uh, from? Where are you from? Where are you calling from? Uh, from Texas, close okay. to Dallas. And uh, close today to- I was uh, I'm with my iPad and I logged into MoveOn, and they got like a, a map or something that uh, they say they're tracking the UFOs. And when I open it up, uh, they say that um, here where I'm living, just pass by one of them, like. A Three minutes ago, when I when I opened it up, and I tried to get out to see, you know, sometimes they uh, hovering on the sky, but I didn't see anything because it was too cloudy. Um, the other thing that I sometimes I look at is in the mornings when the sun is coming up, you see that uh, you can see in the mirror. Um, I'm gonna try to see it. I don't know if we. Uh, we want to be able to do it right now because they say we're getting close to March and April that it's supposed to be up here in some places. Uh, I would like to see it, but I don't know. I don't know if in where I live is going to show up on the sky. And, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. Did you hear that? <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. What's that? I don't know. That almost... That that was loud, and my computer just went weird on that one. What, what, what was that? You or is that me? No, you say here the beep. Yeah, that was a strange one. Well, shoot, let me just ask you this: How did you come across third phase moon? Well, I mean, here and sometimes, I mean, I, I this I think this is the third second time that I call yep. and the, the one of the second time I, I just I was listening and the first time just uh, I, I I I tell you my experience that I have when I was living in Connecticut and um, well they still um, that I'm mean, interested to to see those things in, in the sky and I believe it because I mean we are not the only ones here and um, in the galaxy or whatever it is. I mean, it's one planet in the whole universe that I wish have life. I don't think we are the only ones. And like the other guy he says, a lot of people that refuse to believe it. And sooner or later, I mean, the government, they don't want to, I don't know if they don't want to share this because they don't want to get everybody in panic or something like that. But they have to know where we're going through. One day it's gonna happen, and nobody knows where what are they gonna do. Yeah, eventually. I mean, if we're gonna die, we're gonna die. But at least you know what you're gonna do someday. Wait, yeah, that's a that's a big statement, uh, Fernando. And uh, but you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking about what President Obama said today, and he said this, this is a big statement, and he said it live on the Ellen show and a little girl asked her do aliens exist and he basically stated this he stated this and it's not an exact quote but it was something to this effect so far we have not made a direct alien contact yet but I'll let you know when it does basically I think he's inferring to the fact that, all right, well, 
maybe they haven't made alien contact physically yet, which uh, I'm not sure if I believe that, but at least he's basically stating that they know that they're out there. And it's kind of an indirect answer. That's what he does. He's a lawyer. President Obama knows how to word things in a way of not getting uh, in trouble and revealing too much. Let me get a F1's opinion on that uh, breaking news story that happened today. Do you think Obama knows that we're alone or not? <clears throat> oh, God. This is probably going to get me in all kinds of trouble. Um, Barack Obama's real name is Barry Saturo. He's from Indonesia, I know for a fact. Uh, when he went on, he, even though he denies it, he went on vacation. His mom went to Indonesia. When he supposedly attended the University of Hawaii at the Manoa campus, I know people firsthand that would watch him never go to school, uh, be, in, be on campus, smoke cigarettes, ask bum cigarettes from people, and then older white men would pick him up. When four guys that were classmates, revealed this information in Chicago, two weeks later, each one of them died mysteriously. If you look it up, Barack Obama's real name is Barry Saturo. He is from Indonesia. I have a friend that owns a surf shop in Kuta, and he can confirm that as well. He does never has had a birth certificate because uh, the U.S. requirement, one of them for, to be president, is you have to be a citizen. Um, he is. Wait, wait, hold, hold on a sec, F1. I know we know all about. Well, we don't know all about Obama. Sounds like you know a lot about Obama, and that's a different uh, show. Third phase of moon really doesn't go into too much of this kind of stuff. It sounds like you got the proof too. That's quite amazing. But my, uh, it's just a qu really quick uh, question to you, F1. And you know, nobody's controlling me to suppress this. I'm just want to stick it on. The UFO phenomenon. Do you think uh, he knows? It sounds like he knows with his statement. He today. knows. He knows. He knows more than most presidents have ever known. It's because he's been such a cooperative puppet. No president yeah. is as a president. There, you could no matter who wins the election, all they are is a different puppet in the puppeteer's hand. If you don't believe me, well, the, these whoever doesn't believe me. You really better pull your head out of your butt. <laughs> Let me ask you this: who's who's controlling Obama? Do you got a name? Well, no, but I know this: <clears throat> that his wife Michelle was also part of uh, related to the Rothschild family, who is one of the families that are represented in the Table of Nine. The only American family that was ever allowed into that group were the Rockefellers. Um, the Illuminati are basically just pawns. They're basically pawns with enough money because they use these people. They're, they're like bishops in a chess game or rooks, but they're nowhere near the king or queen. And even the king or queen are still being controlled by the players above. <laughs> what do you think about uh, this guy named Trump? Do you think uh, he would be a pawn? He he, he Trump, he's it. Trump is Trump is an egotistical, rich, very intelligent businessman. Um, I think he knows what he's up against, and he has built enough of an empire to keep himself safe. Remember, when Jackie Kennedy's husband got shot, she went to Aristotle Onassis. Why? Because he was foreign. He had a boat, a huge, and could protect her. That was out of character for her. Well, wow. yeah, let's bring in a chalice real quick. We got a got about a minute left in the show. Chalice, uh, what do you think about what's just been said about uh, information in regards to the presidential race and information at the top? All right, you know, it's really kind of plain right right in front of you. He did answer the question. He did. What did he say to you? And everybody said, "No, we didn't. We didn't have it with them, but." We didn't alien, but we met extraterrestrials. He never said that. Address? Yeah, he didn't say that. See, there's where you got it. No one. If the little girl would have said, "What about this or that?" 
he didn't finish the sentence, you know. So he got by with it, and we lost our chance. Because little girls should have said both, not one. Yeah, you're exactly right, Callis. I sure. Oh, come on, oh, President Obama. I'm inviting me right now. Third phase of moon. We'll keep it civil. We'll ask decent questions, and we'll bring facts and eyewitnesses and solid proof, and ask him what he thinks about this stuff. And what would be the protocol? I want to hear some of the protocol as well. And uh, that's you know, a, I think he's a wonderful yeah. guy, I really do. And he went out yeah. of his way for me a lot of times, and he's a good guy. But when you're president, I mean, you people don't realize. I know what the difference. You're a puppet. I mean, you're he's only doing what he's told, and he, you know, he's trying to do his job. And if you know what I know about the president, that you. Ask anybody who knows what level seven is at Air 51. So you know what that is. Well, you know what? A whole slew of clubs. Wow. Oops. That's uh, Third Phase of Moon Radio is just about ending, but I want to know about security. Or what What, what did she say? She said security seven? Wow. We're on a cliffhanger here, people. Stay tuned next week, Friday, for another amazing live radio show we're always doing this every week don't forget every friday 11 p.m eastern time 8 p.m eastern time and we're here live every friday and don't forget if you've captured anything amazing in regards to the ufo <laughs> phenomenon submit it to third phase of moon we're always standing by on our youtube channel look for updates wow this has been an incredible night Everybody, keep your eyes on the skies. We're not alone. Blake Cousins. We'll see everybody again next time. Control, this is flight. We're tracking three fast-moving objects. Uh, origin unknown. Third Saints of Moon and master music artist Paul Barron is back with his second album. Eleven brand new soundtracks out of this world. Heard over a hundred million times. Available on iTunes right now. Paul Barrett's Third Phase of Alien Nation.